Now, this is the worst earthquake in Victoria, inland, and uh, it happened like you no know, suddenly. And these type of earthquakes, because we have what's called, if I explain a bit more, the there are plate boundaries. The world contains some plate boundaries. Now, these plate boundaries are in we know New Zealand, Christchurch, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Indonesia. They are on the plate boundaries. But we are in what's called the uh, intraplate. That is, we are in a plate called Indo-Australian plate. So now this, what happens is this plate moves about few centimeters, up to about seven centimeters a year, towards the Indonesian side. We don't, we don't feel it, but it moves. Because it's moving, there'll be some pressure build up within the crust. Now, this we know it's underground. It's very hard to predict. If it's overground, you know, cyclones. Even we know now we got the technology to predict now. Like you now we know a few days back cyclone is coming, but because it's happening underneath, it will be impossible to predict, especially our type of earthquakes. Now we have some technology in plate boundaries to predict something at least few days before, but not in here. So because of that, that's why we have to be very careful. Now luckily this one happened uh, about you know, 124 uh, kilometers away in, in Mansfield, but it is a worse uh, earthquake ever. Uh, in in uh, Victoria. Yeah, so it's again a good question. As we know, I, I was also in Chapel Street uh, looking at some buildings. Now, uh, here we saw some heritage buildings. Old buildings uh, got damaged and the, the bricks fell. Luckily, I know uh, lockdowns are not that great, but luckily it happened lockdown stage and not many people around that area. Otherwise, Chapel Street is a busy street. They have counted about 60 to 70 structures, even some damage. Some people had, you know, the, uh, the paintings falling down, people are screaming, uh, all sort of things happened. We all felt it, this particular earthquake. Now on the structures, the old structures, the, the heritage structures, which were built, uh, uh, again, I'll come to that later on, but 1989, there was a, uh, uh, earthquake in Newcastle. Uh, so uh, after that only all these things changed. People started thinking about earthquakes. Before that we didn't even uh, consider any earthquakes. Now in terms of the structures, masonry structures, we have bricks and all that are very, uh, they are unsafe and they can fall down. So coming into the tall buildings, uh, it's a good question on tall buildings because many people live, but tall buildings also people are scared. I know there are a lot of stories of uh, and people got, get scared. But tall buildings are safer than the, the one or two low-rise structures because tall buildings, we call it flexible. It can move uh, like this. Because of that, it absorbs less energy. If it's really rigid, like stiff, like a, a you know, two-story building or something, then of course it can absorb more energy. Also earthquake energy. Also, the tall buildings are designed, you know, carefully, all that. So because of that, tall buildings are the safest, actually. But however, I had to also say in that, for example, like if you take, um, like, you no, know, I was involved in the Crown Casino building, it's near and the South Gate. Next to that is the, the Yara River. So um, our Melbourne, uh, our soil is bad. That is uh, around that area, especially because of the Kood Island silt. However, bad means now we know how to design for them. So in the Crown Casino, I also was involved. We carefully designed for earthquakes. When there's soft soil and the so soil is bad, it can magnify the earthquake and damage. So although tall buildings are safe, if it's in a depends on soil condition, you need to be carefully design them. Bridges, we call them like lifeline structures. That is, they are really like what happens if you if the Westgate bridge had, had a problem whole western region is cut off i know we are getting the tunnel but there's few more years to come before the tunnel even that you know Westgate bridge is very popular so the the bridges uh, we did a study we had a uh, in fact uh, a research grant to study that with rmit uh, with professor sedung in rmit uh, the that particular project is on assessing all the critical road infrastructure this actually in fact uh, this was few years back so in that we found old bridges designed long time back are still critical because it can come out of these bearings and all that. So Westgate Bridge, if I say that, uh, uh, the Westgate Bridge, I don't think we have done enough work. I think that's in the future we have to do some work assessing them. Sydney Harbour Bridge, 
I was we were part of it strengthening the bridge in that we in fact work with the road authorities there at that time uh, under Professor Vijay Ari Ratna was heading the road authority at that time we were doing that work and we even strengthened that we put some dampers to absorb the earthquake energy so there's a thorough study has been done in uh, done in uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge I hope it'll happen in the Westgate Bridge as well so bridges are generally it can yes if it's not properly designed may have some problems houses are, of course we all live there uh, the houses are the key and i'm also got few calls a uh, number of calls actually in fact after the earthquake asking the question are we safe inside because people were worried because the houses were shaking and you know the again as i said paintings are falling and so this has happened this time so the houses means that normally our structures are uh, we call brick veneer a uh, brick veneer ones are the timber and the cladding is just the masonry is just cladding so masonry can fail but the newer ones after especially after you no know, mid eighties to all that uh, is that they have been tied back to the timber otherwise uh, there are issues timber because it's lighter absorbs less earthquakes however we have to carefully design the joints most of the failures around the world are in the joints not in the actual elements but those joints are the ones are failing so we have to be very carefully so houses the again the the answer is that um, houses can be safe if it's but we had to look at it carefully most of the houses built in about mid 80s to afterwards let's say late 80s afterwards are like relatively safe however this type of earthquake we have not experienced because of that we need to be really reassess all that i think things will happen in the next few years we'll be assessing again all those uh, houses to other big buildings to all that and the bridges and all that again it's a, i think it's a, something that we had to start all of us are to start thinking i'm also part of this what's called earthquake engineering standards committee uh, since long time so we always uh, like you no know, assess the the codes and standards and the the design methods to how to build things and all that so there were changes after 89 because before 89 newcastle was zero no one expected any earthquakes and there was 89 earthquake 5.7 smaller than this 13 people got killed because it happened very close to newcastle since then we have changed the codes a lot we have some other earthquakes like mekering 6.5 to other ones happen in mostly remote areas but when it's closer to the city centers damage is more so this it means like no lesson learn is it can happen in melbourne as well close to melbourne what would happen if it if it happens in the close to melbourne so what we did was we uh, made some changes few years back uh, that is we brought australia all levels to a minimum level like brisbane was 0.05 in that particular acceleration scale as a technical term i don't want to use too much but 0.05 was brought to 0.08 which is melbourne sydney levels but even part of melbourne there are some higher than that so what's going to happen in the next few years we already started monitoring things and uh, it may even uh, we may decide to increase it further the melbourne just to be as a precaution so maybe i'm expecting maybe point one or so we may expect it to change so that led bit more not too much but add more to the our design methods but we have to to do that so the the good question on the lessons learned now one of the lessons learned is that we have to look at all these heritage structures especially the old structures and then see what happens if there's an earthquake we didn't think like that so as i said that uh, would have killed few more people if it was if people are walking around there and no lockdown so because of that uh we had to start assessing the all those uh, vulnerable or so uh, critical uh, structures especially the uh, old buildings but it doesn't mean that some of the newer buildings also people sometimes you know cut corners uh, they don't really you know sometimes properly designed so we need to really be very carefully assess the earthquakes we have to start treating earthquakes seriously because before we thought no earthquakes in australia not to worry it's all california or Uh, New Zealand or somewhere, but now we have to start thinking. There is a good possibility we will have earthquakes in Melbourne and Australia. So that's the main lesson. Uh, that it's in summary. I want to just say that. When can we expect the next uh, earthquake? Yeah, that's a very that's a very good question. Uh, actually, I hope I, I become a million or a billion if I know the answer. But this is the it's a good question again because the uh, as I mentioned the boundaries. 
because there are some uh, monitoring things happening so we can really uh, really predict a bit more but even that is difficult but at least we know it's some movement but these areas how can we put there are some monitoring being done other thing which has happened is that uh, uh, these ground penetrating radars and so on that now can go to 40 kilometers down now these things these plates are you know 40 million years back these falls happen and uh, uh, so the to predicting predictions are very difficult however only way is to really be prepared for it and to rather than like no it can we have to assume that it can happen next week to us thank you very much thank you very much